So how do we know that God is listening when we pray? And how do we know that God is actually helping us to deal with our hard times? There, there are a couple of other questions that might lie underneath of, of that question or where the answers might overlap a little bit. And I'm, even though I'm not going to directly deal with those questions, my answer to this question might also help to answer those questions. And th those are, uh, why, why is life hard sometimes? And why doesn't God just take away the pain that we experience when we pray for him to do that? Or, or why do bad things happen to good people? Now, I want to be careful in answering this, this main question is why, how do we know that God is listening when we pray? There, there's a false teaching out there, the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel. Uh, basically, what that, that says is that because God wants you to be healthy, happy, and prosperous, that if you pray for anything with enough faith and with enough of your own righteousness, that God will just give it to you. Um, and that's, that's absolutely bogus. And what they tell people that, that don't have their prayers answered in the way that the, the pastors and teachers say they should, is they'll, t they'll say, well, you don't have enough faith, or you must not be righteous enough. And that's just, that's just completely bogus. If you read about Jesus himself, who was, who was absolutely perfect, there's, no, there's never been anybody more righteous, more good than Jesus. There's never been, a, been anybody more faithful than Jesus. If you read in, in Luke chapter 22 or Matthew chapter 26 about Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, then you'll see Jesus, before he was arrested and crucified, praying not to be crucified. God, He said, God, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. If there's any other way to carry out your redemptive plan, let's do that instead. Uh, and this is Jesus who was perfect. He was completely God and completely man at the same time. And he's praying to God the Father, asking for another option. And that didn't happen. God's redemptive plan was to pay for sin. The wages of sin is death. He to, his plan was to pay for sin by the death of a perfect man who was also God. That happened in Jesus. So, so God the Father stuck to the plan, and, and Jesus the Son, God the Son, submitted to the plan, and, and, it, and it happened. It was carried out. But that wasn't what at least the human side of Jesus wanted. That wasn't what the human side of Jesus was praying for. So I, I, I have to imagine that Jesus as a man felt as if God wasn't listening to him, God, as if God the Father wasn't listening to him. So when, when God doesn't answer our prayers in the way that we want them to be answered, how do we know that he's listening at all? How do we know that he cares? How do, how do we know that he loves us? Um, the most basic answer, and I know this feels like a trite answer, is because the Bible says he does. Uh, specifically for the question, how do we know that God is listening, I would point to Psalm 116.1, in Isaiah 30, 19, and those are specifically verses about God hearing his people crying out or hearing his people praying in the midst of their suffering. And, and I'll link underneath the video uh, a, a list of other scriptures where you can see the, the countless examples of people in scripture, people throughout the Bible, praying and then having their prayers answered. Now, sometimes those, those answers to prayer happen in minutes, and sometimes they happened in years, but they happened. So what about us today? Because, well, we're not the people that we read about in those stories. We might have things in common with them, but we're not those people, right? Uh, sometimes God allows hard things in our life for the sake of making us more mature. If you read in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, you'll see the encouragement that James is giving to the, the church that God uses trials and tribulations or hard times in your life to build spiritual maturity into you. Uh, you can think of this like spiritual weightlifting. While, while you're underneath that bar, putting all the energy into it, it's heavy, it's hard, it's taking up your energy, but at the end of it, you're stronger. Whether that's actually that you completed 
the thing yourself or that the spotter took the weight off of you. Uh, you're stronger at the end of that. And so whatever hard time you're experiencing, that is, is one thing that's going to happen almost for sure, is that you'll be stronger by the end of it. But why is that thing happening in the first place? Um, these are just possible reasons, and I'm not saying this is the case for everybody or that it's the case for you, because I don't know your specific situation. It, it might be happening because of sin. Whether it's your sin or somebody else's sin, the world is full of sin. And sin is, it carries consequences. It has results in this life that are not pleasant. So it, the hard time that you're in might be a result of sin. It might be because, uh, because God is using that to get your attention, to get you to refocus your attention and energy on Him. You, you might have allowed something else to take God's place in your life as the number one thing, the number one priority. That could be a thing, that could be a person, uh, it could be work, it could be your family, whatever. And that's idolatry. So the hard time that you're going through in your life might be because of some kind of idolatry. And God's waving and he's saying, hey, hey, attention over here, not over there. And he's, he's helping you in a hard way, a tough love kind of way, to refocus to where you should be. Um, and there's other times in, in the Bible even that God doesn't give a particular reason for what was happening. Or he doesn't even really ever answer or explain what his reasoning was, what what was going on. If you read the story of Job, Job experienced a lot of suffering, lost everything, got sick, got a nasty skin infection, and for years was praying, God, what is what is going on? What's the deal? And if you get to the end of Job, God pretty much just says, hey, I'm God, don't question me, but trust me. I've got it under control and I have your best interest in mind. And at the end of the story, you see Job restored. He got a family again. He had a, a livelihood again. Uh, so you see the, the end of the story. And in that case, it's a happy ending on, on earth in this life before Job went to eternity. Uh, if you get to the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, and this is on my mind because our, our pastor here at Parkside just did a sermon on this on Sunday. So if you're watching this on, on our website, if you look above and to the left of the video, there will be a link to that sermon. Uh, it's about the, the church at Smyrna. In the church at Smyrna, uh, the people were being, the, the, the Christians specifically were being persecuted or hunted down, imprisoned, and killed because they were Christians. And God's message to them was, hey, I know what's going on. I know you're suffering. I know you're going through hard times. But I'm, I'm the one who d came to earth, died, and rose again. And I've got it under control. Hang in there. And that was, that was it. He didn't say that he was going to stop the persecution. He didn't say he was going to miraculously release them from jail as he had done in other places in the Bible. Just hang in there. So re regardless of where you're at or what the reason is, specifically for you to be in the hard place in life that you're in. God's got a plan for you, and he is the one in control. And whether you you see the, the reason for that plan or the fruit of that plan in this life, or when you get to heaven and you look back with heavenly hindsight, there is a purpose to what you're going through. And God is there, and he does hear you when you pray, so be encouraged. Um, I'll put my contact information at the bottom of the video, so feel free to, to contact me if you like. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.